With this in mind, I'm going to move forward now into our speakers, and we're going to hear more about materials. In first place, we have John Musel. John comes from the area, let me put here, from the Composites Growth Initiative of the American Composite Manufacturer Association. And John will look into the past and we'll see the future of composites. John? Thank you, Roberto. Okay, so I will tell you that this is the first time I've not used in 28 years FRP composites in the title of my presentation. So we are doing something new here. So from the beginning, you know, FRP rebar just wasn't invented yesterday. Um, it actually came in the 1970s. Dowel bars were used in concrete pavements in the late 70s. Uh, they were dug up in 1985, and I was a part of that being dug up in 1995. We couldn't find them originally in Ohio. They were just as pristine as when they were put in. First vehicular bridge was in China in 1982. But in the US, I have 1996 and 1997. 1996 is when we used the first FRP rebar in a concrete deck. 1997 was a all FRP deck, Laurel Lake Bridge and Wickwire Run Bridge in West Virginia. First pedestrian bridge was in China, 1986. FRP tendons and pre-stressing was done in 1986. So you kind of get the drift that it's been going on for a while. First glue lamb beams in the US in the early 1990s, and certainly UMaine was a part of integrating FRP into glue lamb. First FRP pile used in fenders in 1995. That was great to be a part of that. Strengthening systems, we see this column wrapping. Um, it's been around since 1978, a lot of experimentation, and certainly the heavy use by Caltrans in the mid 1990s after the Northridge earthquake. And even a first bridge wind fairing on the Bronx Whitestone Bridge in 2003, which represented the largest insulation of composites on an existing bridge. So there's a lot more to come. And what I'm trying to show you here is that there's been a lot of innovation globally, and there's been a lot of innovation that has taken a while to get to mainstream. Certainly T21 legislation, uh, the Innovative Bridge Research and Construction program, 124 FRP projects, 87 million funded. You can see the distribution, 19 states with FRP decks. Boy, our industry was so tanked. We were like, wow, this is great. We're going to absolutely blow away the construction industry. And if you'll notice a couple of people uh, in, the, uh, in the audience here, uh, Joe here, he was a little bit younger, and I'm a little bit younger there, maybe a couple of less pounds. But our thing was, we put FRP rebar in almost every concrete, I mean, every congressional office in Washington. So we had innovations going on. The use of tendons in pre-stressed uh, concrete members in Southfield, Michigan. That was 2001. Then we even get into cable state bridges. So even though there's a cable tendon in the Penobscot Bridge, just down the road a piece, up in Canada, the whole deck is made out of fiberglass rebar, which is really cool. So now if we can marry the two technologies, now we have a steel-free structure and something that is current technology today. So I used this, uh, uh, this slide in 2016. And at that time, we had about, oh, a little over 500 bridges that I was able to track. And this is minus those that had external strengthening. This is minus those that were pedestrian bridges. So you can kind of see the, the, little, the little blip here. This was because of the IBRNC. And then all of a sudden, this is the United States and this is Canada. So there's a wave effect. Um, I stopped tracking them in 2016 because it became too much of a trouble to try to track all of the new installations. One of these days when I have an extra time, I'm gonna go back to this, but it gives you a sense of back in 2016, we had over 500 bridges. I say we're right now over a thousand. Many examples, many first time, many do-overs. So, you know, acceptance is growing. 
um, but are composites being accepted by the bridge engineers and the infrastructure community? So what we have is a nice portfolio of uh, products that have been developed over the past 30 years uh, between decks, pedestrian bridges, sidewalks, piles, sheet bender, uh, fender and bearing in the uh, uh, foundations of bridges, the bents, the foundations and the walls, bridge pier protection systems, girders, sea walls, I can go on. But this is really cool. This is the past 30 years. What is the future gonna bring? So we all know the FRP benefits, you know, lightweight, high strength, corrosion resistant. We try to point to labor savings, less expensive equipment used to install it. That was done on a bridge just down the road uh, uh, with, uh, uh, in Hamden. Uh, but it's how we transmit, translate, educate the public. And we talked about that earlier. Uh, about what these benefits are and how that translates to durability for the future. So the motivation for our composites industry was the ASCE report card. I kind of show what was done in 2017 on the left and in 2021 on the right. The grades haven't changed a whole lot between the, then, but that's our, been our motivation for the composites industry. What is our target? Can we solve the problem that's there? But there were failures along the way. We fix the problem, we learn from them, we do better the next time, we try to make sure the rest of the industry improves. And that last line is probably the most important point. We all have to work together as a collective industry. So what have we seen? Uh, the Rocks Village Bridge, uh, very nice, historic steel truss. Um, and as was talked about the commissioner the other day, um, putting in a lightweight deck. This was really cool, uh, innovative. It's still being used. Movable bridges, things that require lightweight. Now we have other innovations that are going on. Why not take an FRP bridge and bonding it to an existing concrete bridge? Does that structurally repair it? Up to 50% cheaper than building a new bridge, restore or increase the load capacity? This was demonstrated in a bridge in the Netherlands. When we look at vehicular bridges, specifically moving bridges, you don't have to change the gears, the mechanisms. Um, that lightweight does translate to uh, many types of applications with this being shown in the Netherlands. Pedestrian bridges, always for fast installation. Great example is the Wolf Trap Bridge uh, by Dulles Airport. Uh, Nine lanes had to be shut down for 15 minutes while they floated in an FRP bridge uh, over this highway structure. Great example. Certainly, whether the road, the pedestrian bridges, they don't all have to be straight, they can be curved. You know, bridges were a transportation to bring cars over from point A to point B. Now, pedestrians want to walk over every one of them. And we thought I was just limited to the Brooklyn Bridge but now every bridge has got to have a cantilevered sidewalk. So there are a lot of retrofits that can be there. FRP may be that solution. Bridge peer production systems. You know, we have a lot of expensive assets that are there. Uh, why not put FRP in the water where it won't degrade and corrode and provide that protection? We've seen the technology of research being brought from uh, the research in the lab to now our commercialization. Great examples of collaboration from the academic community and the, and the composites industry, and that should be applauded. We saw this yesterday. So I was watching the news this morning and on the NBC local affiliate, they were talking about this newfangled bridge installation in Hamden. And I love it. The announcer says this fiber reinforced plastic, she had a pause that said plastic bridge. And I'm thinking, oh geez, we have to do something on the communication. But it was environmentally friendly and this bridge will last for a hundred years. That was all of about 20 seconds in this morning's report in the news. Well, it was great, but we have to work on our communications to make sure that they get all the salient points about the benefits of what is there 
versus a reporter's interpretation. And then we continue to have new innovations. Uh, here, this one in Tennessee, now we're thinking about redesigning what FRP bridge decks used to be and what they are now. They used to be pultruded, now they're vacuum infused. Now we have other technologies, they can be instrumented. So everybody's getting into the game now, which is good and it's exciting. And it's the middle name for composites, which is all about innovation. Then you always got to love it when you have an example where deterioration underneath the bridge, uh, this one with uh, uh, the wave runners, and you have the rooster tail with all of that salt water. Well, that does a great job for aesthetics, but it does a bad job for the underneath the bridge, especially that forfeit area underneath the center that everybody wants to go to, and all of a sudden you have corrosion. Well, why can't we put FRP girders underneath that? Well, that is being showcased in South Pasadena, Florida. And we have this benefit of light weighting. I love this picture. Um, I've used it uh, in a couple of applications with other products, you know, stacking up these girders uh, on a truck. You can't do that with precast concrete. Sorry. It was demonstrated in some... Uh, uh, with a different technology in New Jersey, you know, one, one beam, one truck, and there used to be seven trucks. Uh, so in a crowded, congested place, this is a very big benefit. So, whoa, who changed my, uh, my slide here? Okay, that, that circle is supposed to be over the 1,000 foot bridge, and this circle here is over the 470,000. So, we're not dealing with small bridges anymore, which is really wonderful. Um, FRP rebar is being deployed um, on very significant bridges. And what they're seeing, whether it's United States or even Canada, they're seeing a huge installation uh, savings on installation and in transportation. And in many situations right now, it is cheaper than steel. So why not? Then we still get into innovation. Uh, this is in Broward County in Florida, where we're taking cast in place flat slabs, joining it with cast in place caps, a precast concrete panel and piles. Well, this is now taking a holistic approach to solutions. So uh, looking at uh, these type of reinforcements, uh, certainly inter integrating GFRP dowels into that, even experimentally looking at GFRP GFRP partially pre-stressed piles, um, another innovation. So as much as we know about the technology and the products that are there, there's always more innovation. Always good to see on the cover of Concrete International, a lot of FRP. And this particular uh, uh, installation in Saudi Arabia is one of the largest, or if not the largest in the world of utilizing FRP. And why is that significant? So when you look at epoxy coated steel bars versus GFRP bars, it's only 79% of the price. So why not specify the cost based on the technology? Always there's education. Uh, the American Concrete Institute was very supportive of our construction infrastructure composite technology days where we had 21 presentations on everything related to composites, expose the practitioner to everything that can be done with composites that may not necessarily be a bridge. And certainly standards, guidelines, specifications, and codes. Uh, a lot of work's being done in ACI, ASHTO, ASCE, ASTM, within the DOTs themselves and International Code Council. I put FRP rebar in the red because we are hitting something that is very, very unique. In the next couple of weeks, we will be finishing the FRP rebar code in the American Concrete Institute. We will have triaged all of the negative comments from the Technical Activities Committee and the public comments. At the same time, we're trying to get that document published so it's ready by September 12th so that when we go to the International Code Council Structural Committee hearings in Louisville, we will have a document that will somewhat overturn us getting bounced 
in Rochester back in April uh, that FRP rebar will be now be in the International Building Code. Do you know how significant that is? That has the, been the bellwether of what an entire worldwide community has been working on for the past 20 years to bring FRP there. Once you're in the code, all bets are off and that will then trickle down to other applications. So the future, I see more manufacturers, more products. There's always gonna be innovations. There's also new opportunities. I show a diagram of a urban air mobility landing zone. You know, there's a lot of buildings and parking garages that have to be retrofitted. And, you know, they can't take on existing loads so we can utilize composites to take these uh, flying taxis and have them land. So watch this, this is gonna be going out there. So what are the barriers to overcome? Standards, we always need standards, codes are best. Education, how to use the standards, uh, certainly for the academics in the classroom with their coursework and examples, and professionals for the practice, both in the design examples and most importantly, the software tools. Research, there's always missing information that has to be done to clear up any idiosyncrasies in the code, always doing advocacy, and now we have this word called sustainability. So st sustainability for focus for the construction industry, the Biden administration is taking on a major thrust in this area. And look at this middle, increase the use of environmental product declarations and incentivize acquisition of low carbon materials. Well, do we have that yet? We will. The ACMA has put together a sustainability climate impacts project where we're gonna be updating our life cycle inventory data, providing model life cycle assessments, providing tools for members to perform those assessments, develop a new standard, which is a product category rule. So when we take a PCR plus an LCA, it equals an EPD. You love that? So let us be proud of what we've done for the past 20 years. Uh, you need to partner with your customer the competition is steel, aluminum, wood, and concrete. And I grayed out the concrete, not because concrete is gray, but because we like concrete. But we all must work together to ensure that composites are considered and safely specified as tr against traditional construction materials. And with that, thank you very much for your attention.